Hey folks, how's everybody doing out there? Let's talk about open source licensing. Last week, several high profile open source libraries announced that their next version will be switching to a commercial license, Automapper, Mediator, and Mass Transit. They're not the first libraries to do that and they won't be the last, but the community reaction was, well, yeah, you can probably guess. People don't like it when you take away free stuff. And sure, there is a fair bit of support for these kinds of decisions. Mostly, I suspect, from people who understand what's involved in maintaining a popular open source library and just how thankless a task that can turn out to be. But there's also clearly a lot of folks who feel betrayed by this. They're sharing recommendations for moving to alternatives or talking about removing these libraries and rewriting them internally. Let's all chill out for a second and talk about what's actually happened here. First, nobody has taken away anything you've already got. They can't. Once code has been published under a permissive license, that code is available forever, everywhere, under that license. Every project out there that's using Automapper, Mediator, Mass Transit, any library that's published under an MIT or a BSD or an Apache license, that version of that code, you can keep running that for as long as you like. Now, this is where some folks jump in and say, yeah, but what if our build process updates to the latest version without us realizing and then we get sued for using unlicensed software? Sorry, your build process does what? Don't do that. It's a terrible idea to pull the latest release of a package off the internet and build that into your own software. Pin your package dependencies to a specific version, the version that you know works, that you know is licensed, that you know isn't infected with malware. If you do want to upgrade your dependencies to the latest version, that's something a human being should be doing on purpose, not something that happens automatically. What these projects are saying is, look, we've been giving you free updates and features and security fixes for years now, and we're not going to do that for free anymore. And I think that's fine. I hate to break it to you folks, but if your business is only sustainable as long as total strangers keep on providing free maintenance for all the packages that your product relies on, you don't actually have a sustainable business. Now, Let's say that you do have a code base that uses Automapper or Mass Transit, or maybe the last version of Fluent Assertions before that switched to a commercial license. What are your options? Well, one, you can make sure your build is pinned to that version and then do nothing. Whatever that code did yesterday, it'll do today and tomorrow, and it'll keep on doing it for probably way longer than you think. Sooner or later, there might be a critical security vulnerability, at which point you'll need to figure out what to do about it. Or you might find you really, really want to use a feature that's only available in the new version, at which point you just make a business decision. Do you pay for the time it costs to build and support the feature yourself, or pay the money it costs to buy a license for the version that already has it? Incidentally, if you really want to do nothing, you'd probably better grab your own fork of the source code to that version and maybe cache the package binaries as well. Just because you are legally entitled to keep on running that code forever, it doesn't mean it'll still be on GitHub and NuGet two, five, ten years from now. Second, you could pay for it. I know, it sucks trying to explain to your boss that you need more budget to pay for a thing that they have never heard of and they don't understand what it does. So you probably want to start with plan A, you do nothing, and you flag up that at some point in the future, you'll either need to pay for a license or you'll need to start doing the support and maintenance yourself. Accountants love it if you can tell them now about money you want to spend next year. They've got whole spreadsheets set up just for that. Three, you could rewrite it. At a superficial level, most of these libraries are not that complicated. Yeah, you probably can knock up something in a couple of days that replaces the specific places where you are using Automapper or Mass Transit, especially if you use something like Copilot to churn out the code. After all, these are mostly solved problems. The code to implement them is freely available online, and one of the things that AI tools are actually pretty good at is recycling code they found online to solve a problem that's already been solved. But if you're going to accept that you're on the hook for all the future updates and maintenance anyway, why not just create your own private fork of the version of the code that you're actually using, roll that into your own code base, and work forward from there. You get all the benefits of building on a mature code base. There's probably a dozen weird edge cases you haven't hit yet, which that code has already solved, and you're still going to have to update and maintain it yourself, but at least you're not starting by reinventing the wheel. Or you could fork that same code base and start your own open source project. 
Go on, you could call it Open Mapper. And for a couple of months, it'll probably be really, really exciting. You'll get GitHub stars and NuGet downloads and maybe even pull requests with cool new features. And if you're really, really lucky, your employer will go, yeah, great idea. Instead of paying for a license, we'll publish our own open source version and you can work on it on Friday afternoons and everybody will love us and think that we're awesome. That might even work for a year or two. But then, you know, life happens. Your company shifts focus. Suddenly there's no justification for spending time maintaining open mapper anymore. Or you get a new job. And now the thing that used to be a fun Friday afternoon side project has turned into you spending your weekend triaging GitHub issues filed by angry people who hate you. Eventually, you'll start wondering how you can get paid for all the hours you're putting in. And look at that. Now you're the enemy and everybody on Reddit is accusing you of doing a rug pull and betraying the community. As a brief aside, there is one tiny minority of people involved in this whole situation who I think are entirely justified in their protest, and that's the contributors. If I'd spent my own time contributing code to a project in the expectation that I was helping to improve something which would always be free, yeah, I'd be upset. And if I hadn't signed any sort of contributor license agreement, I might be wondering what my options were, since legally I would still be the owner and copyright holder of the code I contributed, code that is now being sold by somebody else under a different license than the one under which I published it. But the sad fact about open source litigation is if the people violating your license terms are big enough to be worth suing, they're probably big enough to win and make it hurt the whole time they're winning. So I don't think we're going to see any kind of landmark legal precedent about this stuff anytime soon. Folks, free software, open source, whatever you want to call it, it's a wonderful thing. It is somebody saying, I have worked very hard to solve these problems. Here's my solution. Here's the result of all those hours of hard work and debugging and troubleshooting. Here is the code that makes it work. You can run it, you can modify it, you can study it, you can sell it, you can do anything you like with it. And I don't expect anything in return. And I find it astonishing how many people out there think that isn't good enough. You shared this code, now you must support it forever for free. Your code doesn't solve my problem, fix it. How dare you even raise the possibility that at some point in the future you might want to get some sort of remuneration for your hard work. I've said this before, I'll say it again, I'll keep saying it. People who share their source code do not owe you anything. You get the code, you get the freedom to run it and study it and modify it, and that's it. And if that's not enough for you, then it's up to you to figure out what you want and how to get it. Pay for a license, maintain your own fork, hire somebody to maintain it for you, switch to a different package. That's your problem. But the only reason you found yourself in this position in the first place is that somebody was smart enough to solve the problem and kind enough to share their solution for free. And if you feel like somehow that person has done you a disservice, maybe sit down, have a little think about your life. Free software is less than 50 years old. The term open source has only been around since the late 1990s. We are still figuring all this stuff out. And yeah, it's frustrating because there is clearly enough money sloshing around the technology ecosystem to pay for all of it. If we could figure out how to take the actual cost of maintaining the stuff and divide that cost equally between all the people who benefit from it, We'd all be paying a few bucks a month for open source, just like we do for Netflix and Spotify, and projects like Automapper would be making enough from subscription revenue that they could add the features, fix the bugs, write the docs, give it all away for free, and not worry about it. It's not how it works, though. Not yet. So for now, how about we all just take a moment to appreciate that open source is actually pretty excellent that the freedom to copy, run, study, modify the code to somebody else's project, that really isn't something that we should take for granted. And if the folks behind these projects decide they don't want to do it for free anymore, the only thing we should be doing is thanking them for their hard work and wishing them well. And yeah, making sure we've got our own forks and backups of all of the bits that we need, just in case. If you found that interesting, check out freeasinweekend.org. It's a site I put together for one of my conference talks. It's all about open source sustainability. There are links to video recordings of that talk. There's transcripts, calculations, and sources. Now, I'm off to make a video about the history of the Java Virtual Machine. Until then, you folks take it easy out there, look after each other, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.